Hey! You got this, Tina! Get down from there! Go for his lollies! Yeah. Never touch another man's pony! Last year, we saw the return of the colorful, loud, and action-packed Boss Baby movie. And just like the one before it, the second installment of the animated film Boss Baby's Family Business has a lot going on. I'm sorry about what I said at recess. What happens on the playground stays on the playground. There is an intricate plot surrounding a baby core formula that transforms adults into infant crime-fighting secret agents. A couple of scenes might not necessarily be too much for younger viewers to enjoy, but it would certainly not mean anything to them. Today, we will go over each and every scene that kids would naturally overlook, simply because they are too young to understand them beyond the surface level. Okay, Tim, focus. Meet outside Armstrong's office at 1115. We'll sneak in and we'll plant the bugs. Are you focused? The introductory scene. Now that the boss baby Ted and his older brother Tim are all grown up, there's a whole lot more to be dissecting. In the introductory scene, we see a glimpse of Tim and his family. Most of us would see how Tim turns out to be a stay-at-home dad. He loves to put his all into his children as on brand. Exchanging glances, lovers. What is this? At this point, kids will naturally be too preoccupied to even begin to notice, let alone make this connection. The adventurous imagination and the witty way about Tim make it a very entertaining scene for kids because now they are captivated and actually invested in the way things would turn out for this great dad. Somewhere in the middle of the introduction, there's a part where Tim's wife, Carol, is accepting an award of some sort. We all heard those jokes. It's all about the dough. My husband rose to the occasion. It's the yeast I can do. You, 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 oh. you, you, you can talk? Yeah. While we can appreciate the plan, words, we can assure you that the kids were oblivious to them. Then it all starts to take a turn. We are hit with the realization that Tim and Ted grew apart. Ted is a big shot CEO. Again, there's no surprise there. But it has come at the cost of the tight-knit relationship between the two brothers that we were used to. The introductory scene ends just after it highlights how Tabitha, Tim's first daughter, is growing up a little too fast for him. You can't do that. Um, liability issues. It's this whole thing. <laughs> this scene is so meaningful and it was actually kind of sad to watch. We see that she prefers to study before bed as opposed to listening to her favorite bedtime story and habitually plugs in to listen to white noise instead of her goodnight song. However, this is different from what you kids would see. Most kids would immediately think Tabitha is simply just being a killjoy. This scene also shows how Tim is affected by these changes. As the movie progresses, kids might generally think he is dealing with some sort of fear growing older, but adults would recognize that it is actually something much deeper than that. Tim knows the story too well and has seen it play out before. He grew apart from his brother, and his current concerns stem from the fact that he is slowly losing his growing daughter. The baby? Tim? Shh! She's been sent from up there. Upstairs? That's right! The suck it scene. Yes, the infamous suck it scene gets parents every time. Remember the scene from the first movie where baby Ted is trying to get Tim to suck on the pacifier and all the adult jokes that were used in the scene? Of course you do. It was hard to miss. Well, given the fact that there are no sexual jokes, we dare say that the scene in the second movie is slightly better. Obviously, the pacifier is a portal to baby core, so we are not surprised that we get to see the scene again. No. One is the loneliest number. The eyes have it. We the people. Ha <laughs> ha. This time, we see Carol, who was previously eavesdropping on Tim and Ted's argument, rush to cover Tabitha's ears and pull her out of the house when the suck it, suck it, no you suck it starts flying around. I was always the successful one. Tommy says no running in the house. <laughs> Hand over the bottom, mullet! The brawl between Tim and Ted while they were getting younger. And just when we think that it's all over with the adult jokes, we are slammed in the face again. The trio turns from their brief visit to Baby Core, and we see the Templeton brothers morphing into their younger selves while fighting over the magic formula. At some point, the clothes do not fit anymore, and naturally they come off. It starts as a non-sexual near-nudity scene, but quickly becomes problematic. One thing leads to another, and before you blink, the brothers have tight grips on each other, nipples, and cry out in sounds that do not signify pain. Thankfully, kids would not pick up on the negative and disturbing nature of this scene, but a lot of parents have reviewed this scene as inappropriate and maintain that it should not have been made into a children's movie. This school is the problem. Yeah, school is evil. No, Daddy, not all schools are evil, just this one. Ted versus Tina, the battle of work values. Somewhere in the middle of the trip to Baby Corps, we get to see Ted advise his baby boss's niece, Tina, on how to succeed in the family business. Fresh off the high that came from looking at the life-size golden statue of himself in the lobby of Baby Corps, Ted tells Tina, you have to be a aggressive if you want to get ahead. Climb that corporate ladder until you are the last baby standing at the top. This immediately says that she prefers to prioritize a good work-life balance in a positive environment where her ideas will still be valued. Because of how quick this exchange was, we know that this conversation meant nothing to kids, while the younger viewers would be more concerned about what they will see when the elevator door opens. We know that adults would definitely pick up on the relevance of both work values. No more parents! 
The Dr. Armstrong evil lair scene. Ted Glue walks his way into Dr. Armstrong's secret purple underground lab where he is taking advantage of babies. Now, we know that Dr. Armstrong is really just a misguided baby who does not seem all that threatening until we get hit with his speech. He expresses his dislike for not just parental guidance, but the whole idea of depending on them. The scene gets even more problematic when war is mentioned and all the babies scream cool in unison. Naturally, the younger viewers subconsciously depend on their parents for support, guidance, development of skills, and anything that would never need. As such, this scene is one that children would trivialize. To them, it's nothing more than a convenient that the heroes would no doubt rectify at the end. However, this scene forces parents to take a step back and appreciate just how much they value the way their children love and trust them. <laughs> well, my parents, they're a little wacky, so... The family dinner scene. Young Tim, now Marcos Lightspeed, appeals to Carol's better nature and lends himself an invitation to the Templeton dinner. He forgets that his parents, who would recognize him, are coming to dinner. As expected, they recognize him, but his cover is saved by the glasses and the fact that Tim could not possibly have actually aged backward. The forthcoming pageant is mentioned, and it is at this point that the scene gets deep. For the first time, Tim and Ted hear their parents' opinion of themselves, and we see that they are hurt by these revelations. Tim Time and Tag Along Teddy would probably get to the most grounded of us, too. This scene is likely just another less action scene that the kids cannot wait to be done with, but adults would certainly appreciate the reliability of just how harsh truths can affect the person. At least we have these last, final, precious moments together. Precious. The it's lonely at the top scene. There is a scene in the middle of the action to take down Dr. Armstrong where Tabitha is singing beautifully in the background while the Templeton brothers are tied up in the box. We see Tim and Ted talk honestly about how they really feel about each other. They both express how well the other person is carrying out their roles and how it is something to be desired by them. The heart-melting apology they could give each other is something that younger viewers would simply find cute at best, as it would mean very little to them. Most adults would see this heart-to-heart -heart exchange as a long time coming, and it is rightly so. By this point in the movie, it is very clear that the rift between the brothers was something that gradually happened over time and was only worsened by a lack of communication. We expected it, and although it came in the middle of a near-death situation, it still warmed our hearts. We guarantee that if the scene was not included, the kids would definitely not have noticed. The second installment of The Boss Baby is definitely a good watch for kids. Pastor Tim, I ain't going back to the clink! Now I just wanted to remind you that Tabitha's pageant is tomorrow night. Sure, you would come across coarse language like you suck, suck it up, diaper sniffer, what the frittata, and what the butt. But it is the presence of positive role models appealing messages about family bonds and the representation of effective teamwork that makes this movie a wholesome one for children. Thanks, babe! Stay calm, Tabitha! I'm coming for you! Thank you for sticking with us till the end. Do like and share it with your friends. Let us know in the comment section if you enjoyed watching this movie. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you hit the bell icon and so you can watch all upcoming videos. That's the spirit, Daddy! You are exactly who I need! Yes! To get Uncle Ted! No!